It began as a college graduate's love letter to research and video game history. It became one of the most cherished series in the history of machinima. Since the autumn of 2009, the cleverly titled All Your History I'll Belong to Us, known affectionately by its creators and fans as simply All Your History, has captured the hearts and minds of a curious generation of gamers by exposing them to the developer lore and trade secrets that have shaped the video game industry as we know it today. Join us as we explore the genesis of this do-it-yourself YouTube darling that dare to document the stuff gaming dreams are made of. Our story, appropriately, begins with the creator of All Your History, Stanford graduate and Iron Maiden enthusiast, Nicholas Werner. I'm Nicholas Werner. Uh, I was the writer, producer, director, editor on All Your History uh, for the first two and a half years of its existence. I was the guy they originally approached to make and sort of concept out the show. I was a college student. Um, before I joined Machinima, I'd really, uh, I'd just graduated, I'd just moved down to Los Angeles. Um, had got in touch with Machinima because I, I actually worked on some Machinima uh, projects in college on my own time. So what I did when I moved out here uh, was they got in touch with me. I started doing some freelance editing for Machinima here and there on different projects they had. And eventually was asking them, you know, could I move towards a full-time gig here? And uh, that's eventually what happened there. At the beginning, it was so young. It was five dudes in a room, which that's not why I signed on, but five dudes in a room just working on their computers, seeing other content, promoting that content, and then making their own. And that's what it was, it was just exciting. The creative vibe at Machinima has changed so many times, and it's been mostly based on the people who came on board. When I was there, there was zero creative vibe because there were no people, until guys like Kale and Matt came on board, and different people started giving their input on different videos, it started changing. And then once directors got involved, it started getting us like starting of lighting the fire under our asses of like, we got to keep up with the people submitting content to us. And so the more the family grew, the more creative we got. You know, it, it, at that point in the, in the early days of Machinima, you know, uh, creative and brainstorming was all like kind of a company wide uh, sort of thing. So what happened was uh, the, the guy who was sales was like, hey, we need to, really hone in on a consistent slate of programming. We need to have something like this, something like this, something like this, something like this. So they were like, we, we need, you know, uh, like a serious game, because, you know, really, and to, to some extent still, Machinima is super not serious at all. Anyway, somebody up in the executive staff at Machinima wanted a history show to be running on the network. Um, they had known, I just graduated from college, I had I'd done research and whatnot in that capacity. Uh, been a gamer my whole life, um, worked with them now on a couple, for a couple of months on freelance projects, so they said, you know, take a crack at doing a, a pilot for a history show and just see what that would look like. Um, and so we put that together and that's the start of All Your History. The reason why we started with Halo for All Your History is the first episode is just because of our history. It's so embedded in what we did. So many fans made, it, made so many good machinimas using Halo. My, I started with Halo, a lot of people started with Halo. And at the time, it was just, it felt right. It was the right thing to do, and it made the most sense, and it had the most history and the most accessible history of what we could attain at that time. There was certainly a lot of oversight, particularly on the very first episode, which you could consider a pilot episode if you want to. Um, again, because it had, the idea for All Your History had come down from someone else, it wasn't my original idea, uh, there was a lot of hands in the fire, as it were. There were a number of people coming in, giving advice, um, having notes that they wanted to see changed. So, you know, I mean, for example, my very first pass, I think, was all static shots. I don't think I had any push-ins or anything like that, which became one of the big um, visual cues of the show. Later, that was somebody else telling me I should start doing that. I was actually trying to remember this morning. I don't think we had music in the very first cut that actually came in later. Um, just something, just have some sort of background music there beneath the narration. Um, so there was a lot of hands in the fire. Uh, the, probably the biggest negative downside to having that was 
again, this push towards the sort of E-style documentaries where it's very flashy, there's a lot of motion, a lot of glitz in it, um, flashy edits um, and that kind of thing, which I very much opposed and resisted. Um, all the way, all the way through the making of that series. But you know, sort of the surprise was the the positives of success because the show ended up did end up doing well. Is that they sort of backed off and said, "Okay, Nick has figured out what he's doing. There's an audience there. We'll kind of let him run with what he wants to do." One of the times that I knew Nick um, was perfect for the show because Nick has a very specific personality where it's like you you go and you go. There's nobody else at this company that that would be more suited for this job than uh, than Nick. Uh, but like one of the times that that um, I knew he he was he was perfect for the job is um, he actually got Gabe Newell on camera and had like an interview. And this is you know Gabe recently has been more of a public facing kind of guy and like talking a little bit more. But this was sort of in a time where. Holy shit, that was a real get and something very, you know, very, this was like right when Steam was still kind of being a thing. So this is, you know, Nick Nick asks some pretty tough questions and gets some, gets some really great stuff out of Gabe at a time when Gabe was kind of reticent. And so after that, I was like, you know, over time that just sort of added and I was like, Nick's the guy, Nick's, Nick's the dude to do this. Uh, the title All Your History Are Belong To Us, uh, of course, is a reference to the meme All Your Base Are Belong To Us. Um, that The idea for calling the show that was Matt Danovic's idea. I mean, I don't want to say the internet was new, but like, you know, meme culture was still pretty young. And I just was like, All Your History Are Belong To Us! You know, I kind of half joking said it, half serious said it, and um, a couple of people were like, yeah, that actually is really good. And I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. Let's, let's call it all your history. Uh, I've said it to him before. I've said it to everyone before. I'll say it to you now. I never liked the title. Uh, to this day, I still don't like the title, All Your History. And it wasn't until, until much later, if I recall, that he was telling me, he's like, yeah, I, I really do not like the name. I hate the name. And I was like, that makes me like it a lot more, like a lot, a lot. Now, Kale had started a new initiative with the Mission to do more entertainment-based coverage, things outside the realm of gaming, but that still kind of spoke to a gaming audience. Machinima's higher-ups loved that idea, and they wanted him to focus on that full-time, so they pulled him off anything that wasn't entertainment-related, which included all your history or belong to us, and moved him on to ETC. So when I started all, all your history, it was basically, hey, we need someone to do the VO for the show, who wants to do it? And I was like, I'll give it a shot, and ended up working out, and there you go. So Nick is pretty much one of the most amazing writers I've actually come across. He's really, really good at what he does. Um, he has a really, really entertaining way about his writing. It's a very, it's very informative, but also still very humorous at a lot, of, at a lot of points. And you know, for me, I went to college to be a history professor before I actually dropped out of school. So I have a, a deep-rooted love of history, and then also loving video games. This kind of was like the perfect marriage of both of those loves. Yeah, I worked with Nick for a lot of years when he first came on and took over the show. He really spearheaded that thing. It's like we had a kind of general idea of what it was, and I think him being the book smart guy that he was, and being very meticulous in the way that he worked, he and that show were like the perfect mix. And I can't really see too many other people who could have really kickstarted it the way he did. You know, if you were if you were a gaming buff and, and you kind of knew your history a little bit, the show was extremely entertaining to to watch and listen to because it was really you could tell it was authentic. You know, it's not just schlock that's being put out there like by a lot of other companies these days. Who will remain nameless? For him, it's a passion project. You can tell from the second he they you know he picks what he's going to do to the end when it's recording. You're making sure that all the things are said right. I know this sounds like nitpicking, but it really means a lot. I wanted to make a show that was, you know, it could prove that you could be, you know, informative and, uh, and educational, but at the same time, it was still engaging, it was still fun to watch, uh, to sort of prove that, you know, there was an audience of people who wanted to come in and see, you know, a serious show about the history of gaming and sort of the, the cultural impact, the financial impact, you know, the story of these people who, who came together and made a game studio. But at the same time, it was still fun to watch. It's, you know, it had humor and it had jokes, but it wasn't about the flash and it wasn't sort of trying to draw you in with lots of 
glitzy editing, it was more just about the content itself. And that's what I was trying to do all, two, all the two and a half years that I was on Air History. With a little help from his friends, Nick made machinima history by erecting a monument to the very industry that kick-started his career. His love of games and the artists and engineers who brought them to life fueled this owned and operated show that became a flagship in machinima's thriving new media fleet. Don't miss us next week for the final episode of All Your History with a look at the latter days of this modern YouTube phenomenon. Yeah, so our home was on Reddit, like, what, what? Okay. counters that. Okay.